Guess I'll get started on this thing. I don't know what's leaking out of these carburetors, but it's it's not cute. All right, I've just got the uh, carburetors off of this engine I'm working on, and uh, it is goopy, oily. I don't know, just leaking out of there. And, so I had the carburetor soaking in the uh, carb cleaner a little gallon here overnight. Well, actually, all day. I put it in yesterday morning. Here it is, Tuesday morning. And it actually did a lot better job than I was uh, expecting it to. Um, the inside's pretty clean. It got all the dirt and dust and just old junk off. It's really, actually, quite impressed. Yeah, if you talk to an old guy, he'll tell you the stuff that he used back in the day. It was so potent it was clean before you got it into the can. You know, the fumes got it all cleaned off. You know, you could only, you only had a certain time limit to use it before the stuff ate through the can it was in. You know, all kinds of stories, but... In this day and age, with the uh, EPA and that whole ozone going away thing, we get this weak water-based stuff. Oh, uh, this one. As you can see, not as nice. Didn't get a lot of the top stuff off, but... And again, it's probably corrosion, so no real surprise I didn't get that off. Insides, nice and clean. Outsides, not too bad. Everything's uh, seems to be rotating a lot better than previously, so that's good. And then that varnished up ATF looking gas is now gone. So overall, not too bad. Honestly, you could probably just reinstall them like this and they'd probably work fine. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put a new float valve and seat in them. So I'm going to go uh, rinse these off and then blow dry them with the air compressor. I got the uh, float bowls in here too. So yeah, not, uh, not too bad at all. Alright, now we'll uh, start the carburetor. Got the carburetor repair kit here. A um, couple of notable things. You're supposed to have a orifice removal tool. Goes inside of the uh, float body there and pulls out the orifice plug. I don't have one, but there's ways to do it without it. So let's do the float bowl first. Gonna remove both screws. Now, all those orifices are, are tiny little holes or passageways for fuel to go through. You want to make sure they're clean. So if you look down there, see so you can see through them? Pretty good indication gas can get through there. But what I like to do is get some wire. See it? Go inside of there and kind of make sure nothing's in those holes. You can also use a uh, needle. Out of a uh, sewing kit or something. So we know gas is going to get through there. So that's good. We can get some uh, q tips if we want or something inside of there. But you got to be careful with that because you don't want any lint going in. Also, intake there, it's got to be clean. This, this looks fine. So pull these old gaskets off these old screws. We'll clean the screws up a little bit and then reinstall. All right, screws are clean. You can then uh, blow through here with compressed air. Make sure everything's clean and dry. All right, I aired out that. Now we can open up our little bag of spare parts. Find our two washers for the uh, float screw. I think it's going to be the bigger ones. And to reinstall these onto our float bowl. Alright, float's done. 
go ahead and remove this old float. Your driver won't work. The float really looks fine. And seat. Eh. Yeah, a little worn. <laughs> See my joke there? It's just a nub now. Alright, to remove the uh, bottom seat valve thing here, you need to get a screwdriver wide enough to fit in there. Um, the problem is, good luck with that one. As screwdrivers get wider, they also get, you know, fatter. So. Pretty good chance you're not going to find a screwdriver that'll fit all the way across there and be able to pull it out. But chisel, it uh, it works. So now we'll clean and dry that out a little. Now pull pull the uh, screws out of the side there. See the low ring? That's got to get changed. Now, given the condition of this carburetor, it's pretty clean, pretty nice. I'm not going to pull out the uh, uh, taper seat things here. You can get to them from inside of there. Clean out the little, uh, little orifice plug, if you will. And here's where our wire comes in handy. Put it in there, move back and forth a little bit. Make sure it's not uh, seized or stuck at all. Same with these holes. So all in all, not bad. Alright, let's get these O-rings changed. Apparently I lost my razor blade. These will do nicely. You want to make sure these aren't obstructed at all. Mine looks okay. Some notable. So, it's pretty, uh, almost coming to the end here. Get our new float valve and seat. Use my uh, seat tool and tighten it down the rest of the way. Should do her. Now we'll install our valve. Our oh, valve clip. We'll slide that over our float arm, if you will. Put it like so. All right, now we just gotta f adjust that float. The float needs to be parallel to the body of the carburetor. As you can see, I'm a hair too high on this. And my angle of it looks not too bad. I need to go up just a hair. It looks okay. Now, I don't know what the measurements are because my manual sucks. It has a picture. It says, you know, float must drop below this measurement. See chart. You look at the chart, there's no measurement. It's kind of, kind of funny. But, see how far it drops down? 
and compare it to the old one. See how far it drops down? So we're going to look for the uh, those to be identical as possible. Which to me they kind of do, but whatever. Alright, so I will uh, measure them out. Using my caliper, see where they need to be. Alright, the original one dropped 31 30 seconds down. Well, maybe a little bit less. Nope, 31 30 seconds. Compare where this one's going. It's just shy of 31 30 seconds, so pretty close. Adjust that. There's a tab on the back of the float. We push that in here. So in my case, you know, 64 through an inch, which probably translates to a little bit of pressure, and you're done. And we are at 31 30 seconds. So, you see how I did that? Now, just saw the camera angle, it looks way different, but when I look at it, it's there. We'll install the uh, float chamber now. In the carb cleaner bucket, I had the screws, a little tray floating for the float. So we'll let those uh, dry out a little bit. All right, bolts are uh, dry enough. Let's go ahead and reassemble here. Okay, so it goes on like so. No seal needed. Uh, you can look at the shape of this the float versus the shape of the housing here. It kind of tells you which way it needs to go. I'm going to screw it all down and repeat for the other carburetor. All right, now we need to get the old gaskets off here the best we can. Um, I'll be probably spending some time here scraping these off. That looks like they're coming off okay. Some gasket material floating around here, so I'm going to clean all that up with the razor blade. All right, now I'm going to get a rag with some acetone and just clean up the uh, mating surfaces here. Also, if you notice this, I uh, clean up the bottom a little bit. Um, whenever you take something apart and you have the chance to clean whatever's around it, you might want to Think about doing that. All right, I've got my Evinrude fuel line out. What I'm replacing is a Napa fuel line. Hopefully this will last a little longer. This is, where does it say it? 516 size, but that's not the important part. Uh, I thought it said ethanol proof on here. No, yeah, anyway. So we're going to measure out how long the old one was, trim it down, we get some better cutters, these are a joke. Alright, I got some PVC cutters, it'll cut this thick stuff. To the inside, it's got that little plastic liner. That's some good fuel on it. Now we'll measure at the top. See this crease? I don't want to do that in the next one, so I'm going to make this a little bit longer and hope it kind of eliminates that crease. Yep, should do it. Now, there is a plastic T inside of here. We need that. But you don't want to break it. So I'm going to get all this old stuff off of here. Should you break it? Don't worry, you don't need to go spend the money from Evanard. Just go over to Home Depot into the plumbing aisle and grab yourself a uh, 516 barb uh, T-fitting. Probably cost you five bucks. So it feels like they would come off but I don't want to drive to Home Depot. It's a half an hour away into town. Screw that. So, cut the fuel line a little bit, weakens it, makes it so everything comes off. And there's our uh, T fitting. Our longer hose is going to go to our bar bottom carburetor. 
along those goes to the top. At least that's the way it came out. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Worst case, we may have to swap them later, but let's hope not. You're supposed to use zip ties right here, not the uh, hose clamps. Now, granted, these hose clamps may do fine, but as years go on, they start digging themselves inside of the hole, and then they kind of go bad. So what I'm going to do is use some of the uh, old little spring clamps. Well, let me explain why I'm not using uh, zip ties first. Zip ties require you to have one of those little tools that squeeze it and pull the zip tie. I don't have one of those. I'll probably uh, buy one in the near future here. But what I'm going to use is some of these old spring clamps. I, uh, whenever I take apart an engine, I always save them. So I have a little plethora left over, and I think that would do fine. So let's give it a pull and find out. I'm not getting anywhere past that little point, so I'm going to go ahead and say those will do just fine. If you uh, haven't seen any of my previous videos, you've probably never seen these pliers before. These are the special hose clamp pliers designed to use on these clips. If you notice, I'm getting them right on and off and they don't slip. It's because the uh, special inner teeth. They're not very expensive, well worth the investment in my opinion. This little line attaches to the bottom of the crankcase and then to the front of the carburetor uh, cover. I think what this does is takes any unburnt fuel and vapors and puts it back into the crankcase. So we'll uh, measure one of these out. I'll go a little bit longer just in case I need it. Now, I know you can't see what I'm doing here. Um, but when you take one of these apart, you'll see this little fitting under this uh, fuel pump here. I'd say it's right next to the uh, little shift rod pin. So that's where I'm putting that, and that'll attach the front. Our next step here is to get some uh, Johnson Evner gasket sealing compound. Apply it to our carburetor gaskets, which came with our kit. They install like so. Anyway, so. We'll coat both sides with the gas compound and slide them over the studs there. So if you notice, I don't have studs here. That's because when I took the nut off, the stud came off instead. I didn't see a reason to fight it and get it off, so I'll be when I reinstall it, I'll be installing studs and nuts instead of just nuts. Two come off right here, one came off down here. Uh, one thing I forgot to show was me cleaning the gasket surfaces of the carburetors, so make sure you do that as well. Now it's time to put on the carburetors. As you should have guessed, I'm doing the bottom first. Looks like something's giving me trouble on the other side. I'm going to find out what. little uh, hose underneath it was blocking me from getting in there in case you're wondering what uh, what it was so I'll get the nuts and stud here and I'll tighten it back down all right bottom carburetor is installed now it's time for the top all right with both carburetors on we can now rehook up the linkage now I'm gonna get some needle nose See how that rod clipped in? The back rod should have done the same. It didn't, so I'm going to get some needle, no, no, uh, needle nose pliers and uh, force it in there. Then I'm going to get this bottom hose clamp off so we can get off this old fuel line. Now I'll measure out a new one. Let's go ahead and get our new fuel line on. Alright, the uh, took the fuel pump cap off. You can get a pretty good view of the fuel pump here. It's uh, not destroyed. I mean, it's it's fine really, but needs to be gone through. So I don't currently have one of these kits on hand, so I'm gonna pull it off and replace it with another good one. So it's uh, raining outside, so I'm not gonna go outside dead. I'm just going to replace the uh, gasket on the fuel pump here. 
Hope for the best. Get a razor blade and clean that out. All right, the fuel pump surface is good enough for my uh, test start. So I, uh, I'm gonna put a new gasket on. But first I'll hook this up and then screw that down. Here's something I did notice. See how close our, well, not close. See our fuel line touching that screw? Eh, a little, a little too close for comfort there. I don't like the idea of that fuel line rubbing on the uh, side of that screw. Some of this expandable tubing over the fuel line, that should give it a little bit of protection. Yep, that's better. So, my clamp didn't quite fit over the uh, fuel inlet, so, eh, what are you gonna do? I just used a hose clamp. Anyway, cleaned up the uh, air cover silencer a little bit, so it's not all greasy and disgusting anymore. So I will now be installing this. Gaskets are a little tricky to get on all at the same time. I'll manage. Gonna let it balance right there. Now, while it's a little loose still, and I can still uh, mangle this around, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the uh, choke linkage. Easier said than done, I know, but it'll get on there. There we go. Now, you can see this little fitting right here. It's your hose. You gotta make sure you plug that in before you uh, tighten it all down and can't get to it anymore. Now, you want to check for a smooth operation of the choke. Um, what I'm doing here is opening it with my hand, or closing butterflies with my hand. And you can see they don't drop, unless I want them to. The, uh, before I put the air silencer on, these operated smoothly, so I don't think it's a problem in the carburetors itself. More of the choke solenoid. So I'm going to take that off and clean it up. It's a little, little sticky. I'll uh, get some steel wool, clean it up a little bit, and put it back in. There's a notch here, and a notch inside the uh, solenoid there. So it's 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 going nice and smooth now. Um, just to make sure, I'm gonna lube it up a little with this dry graphite stuff. Hopefully that'll help it. Alright, now I'll put it back together and stick it back on the motor. So the choke back on. Uh, I played with it a little bit, moving it up and down until I found its perfect spot. So, as you can see. It's working perfect. Got a new uh, air cover silencer gasket. In case you're wondering the part number, there it is. So, got the uh, cover cleaned up so it's not, again, disgusting. So, I'll get that on. Well, that's about it for the fuel system, anyway. Um, just because I'm tired of looking at it, I'm going to pull this solenoid off and put an actual Evernerd one on there. Well, that brings us to the end of this motor. Hopefully, uh, next time you see it, be test starting it. Well, apparently I can't turn it very far, could sit in the tire machine, but anyway. So hope you enjoyed it.